Hello and welcome to this Uni Taster On Demand event. My name is John, I'm here from Uni Taster Days and I host these On Demand events on this platform. And today we're gonna to be looking at university courses in aerospace engineering. I am absolutely delighted to be joined by Atmar, a senior lecturer with Teesside University. And with these events, we always cover four main themes and Atmar is gonna present that for aerospace engineering in a second. That's why you might wanna consider the course, what to expect on it, maybe even some application tips and an overview of careers. And with that, I'll pass things over to you, Atmar. Um, hello everyone, my name is Atma Prakash, I'm Senior Lecturer at the Teesside University in Aerospace Engineering. So um, today I'll be talking about the um, Aerospace Engineering in particular, the courses which you have um, in the UK and what do you expect from the university, what in fact Aerospace Engineering is all about, I mean what will you be doing when you finish your degree um, and some application tips when you apply to the courses. So first thing first, who is an aerospace engineer? So uh, as an aerospace engineer, uh, you will be responsible for big projects to design, to develop, manufacture, testing, for example, production, manufacture, and maintenance of different projects. It could be in any uh, sort of stream. It could be uh, in space industry. It could be military aircraft. It could be commercial aircraft as well. It could be just looking at different components of the particular aircraft industry or space industry, or it could be in rocket propulsion as well. So you could be responsible for looking after a whole project just in propulsion, or you could be an engineer who is working on propulsion itself. So chemical propulsion, electric propulsion, ionic propulsion, all different kind of propulsion system. So you could be an astronaut. That's also there on the table, or you could be one of those engineers who help those astronauts reach the goals and potentials to explore a different planet. So, for example, uh, Mars, uh, we just had another uh, NASA has sent a rover on Mars at the moment. A lot of aerospace engineers were part of the uh, project where they designed the rover itself, not only just designed, but all different components was also created there as well. Again, taking an example of aerospace industry, you could be an engineer who will be working on jet engine, uh, compressor fan designing or turbine designing or combustion designing. So the areas are quite varied. And hence the skill required is uh, quite varied as well. So one of the things which is very important is the numerate skills. So math skills are very important. So maths and physics as a subject in A-level will help you when you go in the applying application for university. You could be part of the research and development, testing, production, and maintenance. IT skills are the other ones which you would gain when you are joining in the university. Uh, but at the end of university, when you apply for the jobs, you would be sure to get a, a job in these kind of varied areas. I mean, people say this is not rocket science, but this is actually rocket science, and it's very exciting. And um, I mean, I'm from aerospace industry, um, so I'm always um, inclined towards aerospace industry here. As I said, example is space shuttle as well, as you can see in the pictures there, or uh, manufacturing industry for the aircraft as well. So what sort of courses which would help you to become an aerospace engineer? Look into those courses. So there are uh, different courses available, but the courses for undergraduates are MNG Aerospace Engineering or BNG Aerospace Engineering with foundation year, with a sandwich year as well. Um, so sandwich year is where you take a year out in industry and you will work for industry. So different universities offer uh, different courses with you know, very, very similar names. So it would be uh, BNG Aerospace Engineering or MNG, which is a four-year course. The BNG is three years course. But if you start with a foundation year, that would be a four-year course as well. Uh, the important thing is to look at the accreditation for the courses. So when you are applying for the courses, see whether the courses are accredited by one of the professional bodies, such as uh, IMAC, Institute of Mechanical Engineers, Royal Aeronautical Society, or the Institution of Engineering and Technology as well for the courses. I've put up these uh, websites for IMAC and Royal Aeronautical Society here. So please take a look when you can. Um, these are one of the uh, wonderful uh, uh, professional bodies there, which provides not only the support uh, to students in the current, as a, as a student, but they also provide support 
um, after finishing your degree. So if you want to apply for jobs, for example, it would help you with the CV, cover letter. A wide variety of library data sets are also there. So why do you want uh, a university with accredited courses? The reason is that at the end of the course, you want to be recognized by the society. So engineering council, for example, here in the UK, it provides the incorporated engineership or chartered engineer at the end. So being a chartered engineer would provide you a lot of benefits such as the improved responsibility, um, as well as um, you'll be responsible for a bigger project. Salary increment will be there as well. So this is the website, www.engc.org.uk, where you can actually go on and, and see uh, what are the courses available within the universities and whether the courses are accredited by a professional body or not before deciding to join that university. It's important that the courses are accredited so that you can apply for chartered engineership in the future. Because some of the recruitment uh, industry, I mean, uh, recruitment consultant or the industries as well, they look for um, those students in particularly who have completed the courses in uh, accredited courses so that they can uh, go on to become chartered engineer in the future. So what is kind of the route to uh, become um, a chartered engineer that is there? So you have three different routes. You can come and um, doing a, a year one in BNG honors. So if you have physics and maths, for example, at A level and the relevant uh, points at A level, you can start normally at year one and then you come to year two and then come to year three. So three years BNG honors complete degree. At the end of the, this year, you can apply for incorporated engineer. Um, at the same time, you will ha have this opportunity to go on a work placement. So if you, most of the universities would do that. So if you are in those universities where you have chosen a work placement option, then you can go and work in the industry for that one year period and then come back from uh, after learning from the experience, complete your degree and come out as an corporate engineer as well after completing your BNG honors. Or if you have a higher marks, you can choose the MNG option as well. So master in engineering, start in year one, year two, you can again have a work placement option, and then you come out at year four, that is at level seven, master's level MNG honors. Uh, that would give you a, a much more opportunity to become a chartered engineer because being a chartered engineer, you have to have a master's level qualification and for more accredited courses to apply for chartered engineer in the future. So MNG is the course to go to, or you can choose BNG uh, Aerospace Engineering and then choose a MSc aerospace engineering or relevant subject, uh, which is accredited again to become a chartered engineer in the future. Having said that, you have to have certain work experience as well before that. So this is the typical structure for BNG MNG, but in some universities as well, you'll also see foundation year courses where uh, if your points are not um, that required at year one, maybe if it's a little bit lower, you can start at year zero. And then you can come to year one and then finish your degree at year three and then eligible for incorporate engineer. So the typical year one entry is, as I said, A-level maths or physics or equivalent. You can also have BTEC, for example, as well. Um, and you can have HND, for example. So in that case, if you have HND in relevant subject, you could join in year two uh, directly rather than in year one. So look for those kind of courses as well in the university when you're applying for the aerospace program, if you have done HND courses. So what will you learn when you join a, a university? So as I said, it's aerospace engineering, but it has got a core subjects, theme subjects in the aerospace engineering. Most of the universities, if you join um, for aerospace engineering courses, you will see maths, you will see structural mechanics, materials, flight dynamics, avionics, aerodynamics, thermal, dynamics, fluid mechanics. These are some of the core subjects which you will be encountering when you join aerospace engineering degree in any of these universities. And these are kind of pillars for aerospace engineer. So if you're looking for uh, to become aerospace engineering uh, uh, degree holder to any university, um, 
it is important that you focus on your maths and your physics skills because that would help you when you join a university um, and learn thermodynamics, for example, or fluid mechanics or aerodynamics. And jet engines is another subject which you will um, study in any of these um, aerospace courses and learn about rocket science or you know, what happens to rocket. How do you actually launch a rocket to space? What goes behind planning a space missions, for example? How much fuel is required if you send a satellite uh, to certain orbits? How are the orbits actually chosen? So those are the exciting areas where um, you will learn when you join aerospace engineering courses. And the other aspect of, of aerospace engineering is not only just the subjects, but you will learn about sustainability, some digital engineering, which is the important tool for industry at the moment. So some of the soft skills that you will learn as you know, being a, um, uh, working in, in a group, for example, or independent learners as well, or learning some software such as CAD skill, finite element analysis skill, CFT skills are quite important. So see for these um, skills, whether these, these are part of that particular university applications as well. That would definitely help because nowadays when you are in the aerospace industry and you design a very innovative and brilliant aircraft, for example, you don't just go and create that aircraft and test. You, you do a lot of simulations first in the computer to see how it all behaves. I mean, um, in previous 50, 60 years back when we didn't have much simulation, people used to do those uh, by uh, doing more practical work. But if you have um, an aircraft, a big 747 aircraft, and you have to perform testing quite a lot of time, there's a lot of cost involved if you do a lot of crash testing, for example, or testing of particular wing uh, loading mechanism to be tested. So it's important to learn those software skills and once you are uh, comfortable that the aircraft is behaving the way it should be, then a prototype is created and then the testing is performed, thereby reducing the cost. So it's important to learn those digital skills. So uh, what else to expect in the university? Um, as when you join the university, you will have, uh, you know, expect to have some lectures, you'll have some seminars, lab work will be there. There'll be some group projects with different group of um, students, your peers. Um, then you would also expect in some courses to have an onboard flight uh, testing. So we'll, you'll actually sit in an aircraft, you'll go in the sky, you'll look at the instruments and you'll work on those aspects as well. Flight simulator is one of the other um, labs which you will have to, to test any kind of new aircraft as well. You'll be involved in the research projects or industry research project as well. So industry has a tie up with the university and they'll provide some project in the aerospace industry, for example, um, CubeSats or any nano satellites, you could be working with industry and you'll be taking that as part of your group project or individual project and getting some results out of it. So that would help not only yourself, but also the industry. And out of that, we'll have some research publication which will come out in the areas of propulsion, performance, material testing, aerodynamics, avionics, whatnot. The aerospace industry is a big industry and there's a lot of different parts which are there. And some of the softwares which you learn, such as um, Siemens Annex, ANSYS, Fluence, SolidWorks, MATLABs, and these are the software, these are some of the examples of software, but there'll be other softwares as well, which would be part of the course when you join the aerospace um, degree program in any of the universities. So look out for these ones. Um, so a lot of calculations and um, simulations are needed. Oh, okay, lastly, some application tips um, when you are applying for the courses within the um, university. So the first thing first, always look for the course accreditation. So see whether the course is accredited by IMAKE, Royal Medical Society, or IET. So that would help you secure your incorporate engineership or chartered engineership in the future. So it's important to look for a course accreditation as well. See how the university's projects um, are uh, tied together with industry, how much connections they have, what sort of placements they get, which kind of industry they get placed to as well. So it's important to look at those aspects. Uh, what are the teaching facilities, lab facilities that they have available? So see whether um, they have all these facilities available within the university. And what are the prospective research publications which the university has uh, within 
the university and you can easily um, see that or if you go on the university's website you can see different um, staff members working there you can look at their profiles you can see what publications they have made and how innovative work they are doing with that university so you can always look at the um, profiles as well attend open days open days is a great way to experience how it feels like to be in that university so you will actually meet a staff member who will be teaching you in the university so please do attend open days if you see um, advertisement by the universities please attend them ask questions with them ask questions with um, the students which you see or previous students as well that will be quite helpful so um, these are some of the application tips which i think would be quite helpful um, and most importantly focus on your maths and physics skills. It's quite important in the aerospace industry. A lot of calculations are needed, but this is very exciting. And you'll be working on rockets. You'll be working on some of those areas which nobody has actually worked on. And you'll be creating something which is unique. And for example, we all use chemical fuels for um, rockets to launch to moon or Mars at the moment. And that is very expensive. Almost 90% is the fuel in a total mass. If you can somehow work together to come up with a different fuel, which can reduce cost, we can go beyond our own solar system. We can go to different planets, galaxies, um, and whatnot. So the sky is not the limit for aerospace engineers. So now, having said that, let's look at the careers um, which is there um, in the aerospace engineering um, program. So. As I said before, as an aerospace engineer, you'll be working in research and development as well in the design area, testing, manufacturing, uh, maintenance, civil engineering, military aircraft, missiles, satellites, space vehicles, weapon systems as well, working for government, Ministry of Defense, um, NASA, European Space Agency, um, and SpaceX as well. So many, many new companies are coming up in the space industry as well. So it's very um, um, innovative and really exciting at the moment you'll be you could be aerodynamics um, engineer you could be avionics expert you could be a materials expert in aerospace area looking at composites um, for the aircraft so rocket design nozzle design for the rockets how can you make it more efficient and how the whole system comes together so systems integration engineer you could be one of those um, the kind of salary uh, which you get as an aerospace engineer it varies across the sector. It depends on the experience. But on an average, you could uh, easily make 48,000 pounds on an average per year. That's an average. It depends on the lower salary and the higher salary as well. So you could start up to 25,000 pounds. And then as you gain more experience or more qualification, it would increase um, gradually. You could be a consultant for a company in the future as you gain more experience. Um, so it would all help. Being a charter engineer does help in the um, in the area in the sector so it's important to choose um, a course which is accredited by the professional body and um, that's um, the careers and salaries there um, at the end i would just like to say thank you very much for listening to the presentation and all the very best in your applications